How keel, decks and compartments are some of the words we often hear while discussing the Titanic. But have you ever wondered what these words mean? So the keel is the bottommost part of the ship and its backbone as well. So if you want to build a ship, you first lay the keel on the ground and then you build all the way up. So it's essentially the backbone of the ship as well as its bottommost part, the floor. The hull is the ship's sides and bottom and it excludes all the above deck structures and the masts and funnels and all that. Decks are the floors on a ship or we can say the levels. So on this diagram of the Titanic you can see the ship's forecastle deck, the two well decks, the poop deck as well as the four decks that were located above the hull not inside it. So the Titanic had a total of 10 decks and from top to bottom there were the boat deck which was the topmost deck. It contained the lifeboats and the funnels. The highest point on this deck was the roof of officer's quarters which was not allowed for passengers to access. The A deck was also known as the promenade deck and it was a first class only space. It contained their promenade and their facilities. B deck was also known as the bridge deck, although the bridge wasn't here, it was on the boat deck. And on this deck, it was mostly first class facilities and cabins, but the second class entrance hall as well as their smoking room was also on this deck. And the forecastle deck and poop deck were also located on the level of this deck. The sea deck was also known as the shelter deck and under the forecastle deck the crew had cabins while the third class had their cabins under the poop deck while the majority of the area in the middle was occupied by the first class cabins as well as the second class library. The D deck was also known as the salon deck because the first and second class had their dining salons here and they occupied most of the space. The firemen had cabins in the above section while all three classes had cabins in the remaining space. The E deck was also known as the upper deck and it contained accommodations for passengers from all three classes as well as for sailors, cooks, stewards and trimmers. And there was an uninterrupted passageway that ran from bow to stern on this deck and the crew members had nicknamed it Scotland Road in reference to a famous street in Liverpool. And I believe the most famous uh, feature of this deck was a room that was used for storing potatoes. Yes. The F deck was also known as the middle deck. And this was the last deck that was accessible by the Grand Staircase. The Grand Staircase began all the way at the boat deck and it was two flights of stairs. But it terminated as a single flight at the F deck. So the canals, swimming pool, techish bath and third class dining salon were located on this deck. And the G deck was also known, which was also known as the lower deck was the last deck that was located above the waterline and accessible to passengers as well. The squash court as well as the post office along with food store rooms including a space for refrigerated cargo were here. The Orlop deck contained more space for storing uh, food and foodstuff and refrigerated cargo as well as the mail room and cargo holds. So you don't have to confuse the mail room and the post office. Because the mail room is often mentioned when we, when we discuss the collision later on. There were two different places on different decks. The lowest deck was the tank top. And this deck contained the fireman's passage, which was basically a tunnel through which the firemen would enter and exit the ship. The boiler rooms, coal bunkers, fresh water tank and the engine room. They were all here. Now as for the watertight compartments, uh, partitions known as bulkheads divided the hull into sections. These sections were known as compartments and in each bulkhead 
there were doors that you could just shut to prevent the water from entering. So initially the doors would close very slowly so that all the occupants can get out. But in the last 18 to 24 inches, they fell like a guillotine to you know, create a watertight seal. And you might ask, what about those stuck inside if they couldn't escape? Well, in each compartment, uh, there were ladders that uh, led to the boat deck and sometimes to other decks as well. When you reached the top of these ladders, there was a hatch and through that you could actually get out. So the whole idea of firemen being trapped inside a compartment because the doors had closed below decks, that's just not true. These doors could be closed in three ways. First from the location itself, like there was a lever over there, you could use that. You could shut them from the bridge and there was also a float device that would automatically shut the doors if the flooding reached a certain height, a certain level. So the bulkheads divided the hull into 18 compartments and the compartments were labeled A to P with A being the foremost. And of the 15 bulkheads, 8 of them reached D deck while 7 reached E deck. So you can see on this diagram like the height of each bulkhead and the green lines indicate the areas where survivors, witnesses saw water coming into the ship's hull on the night of sinking. Thank you for watching.